Hey, good morning guys. Uh, just uh, coming back here on part two um, of this tailstock modification. And, and before we start on uh, the machine work for part two, I just wanted to recap from part one. Um, I had a few people, uh, Jim, the Metal Butcher, Tom's Wonderful World, uh, a couple other guys that said, you know, hey, just sell that one and get the correct one. You know, and if that was really in the cards and an option, uh, for me at this point, that's what I would do. You know, I would just, I would just do that. Um, I don't realize if, if you guys know that, um, I bought this one for 350, the correct one is 850. That's a, that's a $500 differential. And it may be if an $850 outlay right now, cause it might take a while to sell, you know, it's not like these things are flying off the shelf and there's, you know, um, just because I put it on eBay doesn't mean that it's going to sell. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a whole bunch of equipment that's come in here in the last few months. And I've got one more thing that I definitely want to buy that I've got to, and I'm, I'm out, you know, I don't have, I mean, even like this lathe, getting all the tooling, getting chucks and, and all that stuff for it. I mean, it's 500 here, a thousand there, you know, and I still don't have even a three jaw chuck for this. All I've got is a four jaw chuck and the collet chuck. So I still need to add a good three jaw chuck, which is, you know, pretty close to a thousand dollars to get a, to get a good one, you know? Uh, so I got to stop doing 500 here, a thousand there. I just, I don't, I don't have it. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to borrow money. I'm not going to go into debt to try to do this, all this stuff. It's, if I don't have the money sitting there and available to me, then I can't afford it. Um, and I can't afford this. This is what I can afford and I'll have to make this the best I can make it. Um, and just realize that someday I may come back and do something different here. But the one thing that by doing it the way I'm doing it, this, I'm not disturbing the original part. Okay. So I've added in this spacer. I'm making a couple of new parts so far, at least the design, uh, in this, I've, I've not, um, you know, harmed this original part in any way um now the the main suggestion which many of you didn't offer any insight into some of you did and i really appreciate that but the main question i'm asking is about this you know about this whole location here um so we we have you know we're, we're basically moving um the the whole location or the the boss on the inside of this guy that, that this threads into is getting moved up a half inch okay i want to mention bill de la vega and show you he he came up with a 3d model um here bill is on youtube he's got a youtube channel i'm gonna put a link to his channel so go check him out i uh, used to make videos a long time ago and recently he started making them again um and uh you know works at a at a college in a machine shop and is uh, got a wealth of fabrication and machining knowledge and experience, something I don't have. But he was nice enough to take the time to actually create a 3D model for the suggestion he came up with. Um, and I love what he came up with, and that'd be perfect. It'd be easy to make, and I think it would work well. But here's the issue with that. Um, so because we're adding a half-inch spacer, that means this hole is moving up a half-inch. So if you... If we said, I'm going to just put a half inch on the calipers here. Um, right there. So, let me try it this way. All right, so the, the bottom of the hole is moving up a half inch. And I don't know if that's, if that's showing up. Which means the new bottom of the hole is going to be where the top of the hole is there. And it, it just intersects with the existing boss or the existing hole. If I was adding a one inch spacer or whatever to that, it would, it would, what he's come up with would definitely work. Now, you know, I don't know if I could do something like what he's, he's done except for, uh, space it forward on either side, you know, space it outward. Um, you know, so have it, uh, thread into the existing boss, but then then space it out this way and have another set of accepting threads that are up slightly or i'm sorry i actually protruded down slightly in this case um so um anyway i uh the one thing i'm thinking about doing is and and this would be the only 
bad part, but it would still be reversible and you'd still be able to use it on the smaller lathe and hopefully this is showing up. Let me get this tilted up, hopefully it doesn't fall. Um, you see those bosses there, is just machine those off and um, make a new boss that's just slightly longer in an L-shaped configuration and have that uh, you know, drill and tap in, into this uh, casting and, and bolt those in. But I need to look at that closer because I can feel some recesses in here, so that may or may not work. Um, so that's, that's one thought there. The other thought is do something externally, you know, where I would I have a little bit of clearance here uh, where there would be something, you know, like a, a plate that would come up that would be drilled and tapped, you know, um, and use some bolts on either side that would push this in or out and align that and keep it, it centered and then pin this plate to this plate. The other suggestion that everybody came up with, a lot of people did, was why not, you know, why did you make it out of aluminum? And the, the answer to that is um, because I'm working on that little mill and, you know, it's, it's a big enough clamping job to, to get this on there to begin with. And I just don't think, I, I didn't think it was rigid enough really to try to machine and mill all that out of steel. Um, if I had the big mill up and running, which that's going to be next, as soon as I get this lathe working correctly, I'm going to focus on the, the larger mill and get it working well. Um, but if it was running, I would have made this out of steel, but it's not. I've got the little mill, so I just figured aluminum would be easier. Some people said make this out of, you know, buy a three-quarter inch uh, piece of ductile iron and make it, out, make it a one piece. Well, you can see this is not, this, I would need... Um, you know, roughly two inch thick there. <clears throat> and you may be able to get a two inch thick piece of ductile iron. I'm not sure, I haven't looked into it. Um, but I would still have to make those internal parts because the, the distance and all would still be the same. Um, but it may make it, you know, less uh, variability in trying to get the height adjusted. Several people had ideas on height adjustment and I really appreciate those. Uh, some really good suggestions there from a couple of different guys kind of suggesting the same thing uh, using uh, two rods of a known dimension and uh, measuring from the top diameter and then subtracting the uh, the radius from both of them so uh, it took me a second to kind of figure that out and understand it but um, but I eventually did and it makes sense and I'll definitely do that 1970 Chevelle offered to let me borrow his lathe tailstock alignment tool and I may take him up on that also um, but so let's get moved over after a lot of rambling there and we'll talk about the uh, what we're gonna do today all right this is the first part we're gonna make today and um, the one the one thing I that George the shade tree fix it man uh, suggested was you know why not cut that off and make a new one of these and drill and tap both end, ends of it and screw this in there and that and that's definitely you know you could do that um and i thought about doing that but it's really not going to be too much extra work other than that because you know the 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 drilling and tapping of this and the threading of both ends that's two operations there um that if i subtract those two the next two operations that i could do in place of it are mill these two slots on either side and drill a hole through it and then i've got basically the same thing with with the same same amount of time plus it would allow me to keep this and hang on to it should i ever want to put this back i can easily put this back in place and and uh you know it'll work on the smaller lathe still um so i'm going to make this out of the one inch stock that i have here and this is a um this is half inch and you can see it's fine thread uh this this is a uh, 20 tpi uh thread gauge there and you can see that fits in there perfectly I don't have a die for that <clears throat> and I can't thread on the lathe at this point so I got to go to McMaster or not McMaster I mean uh, fasten all see if they've got a half inch 20 die uh, for for that uh, so um, we're gonna take this apart and get going and we'll film uh, what we do oh and just wanted to mention that you know I'm gonna make this uh, shoulder part of this is going to be half inch longer all the other dimensions are going to be the same that'll be the same that'll be the same this will be a half inch longer than it currently is all 
All right, looks like this is coming apart pretty easily here. This is not pressed in or anything. It's just a slip fit and I got a little slot for the set screw and then that comes out. So here's our one inch stock. We're going to do some layout work on this and um, <clears throat> go from there. All right, so I did a little bluing on there with a Sharpie. It's going to lay out some lines here to kind of help and then take some measurements separately. But the layout kind of will give a visual. I'm going to scoot this in just a little bit off the back there so we can clean that up. I'm going to clamp this down if I can. You know what, that's probably got some paint build up or something on it there. I'm going to clean that up real quick. All right, we're uh, over here in the uh, mill and I've got a three quarter inch carbide fine roughing mill corn cob style mill and people pointed out I think it was metal butcher or somebody before when I used this uh, said hey you got too much stick out that's gonna hurt you on rigidity yeah I'm, I'm aware of that in general uh, it's just that this thing has a long shank on it and that's all the way up in the collet as far as it'll go even though it's extended way down this is by far the sharpest uh, freshest best cutting end mill I have I just realized that uh, I've already center punched that hole and if I mill that off I'll lose that so I think I'll go ahead and drill that hole now um, and get that done and then I'll come back and uh, do the, finish up the milling so I hate to do that and switch everything out and put the drill chuck in and all that but I think it's gonna be the right thing to do Uh, I'm just So 
using our poor man's DRO again, uh, touched off up here on this uh, base surface. And this has to come in 3 16ths from each side. Uh, so we're uh, touched off from here, we're zero on the indicator, and we're just gonna come up 3 16ths or 187 thousandths and uh, cut this side and then not adjust anything, flip it over, bump it up against the stop, cut the other side, and then uh, we should be good to go. This is not a critical dimension, I don't believe, you know, so uh, I'm not going to try to sneak up on it, I'm just going to go for it. Alright, so that's a hundred thousandths, and we'll go around to 87.5. And that's 86. And that's 87. And there's 5 tenths. Let's go back just a touch. You're looking at it on a different angle, so it may not look like that. And I don't even know if it may be uh, whited out. But um, So we, we went 187, 187 thousandths and 5 tenths. Okay. Here's what I got uh, after I took it out of the mill. I uh, did the radius on this by hand on the belt sander, and it's not exactly identical. I mean, I could have, before I milled this, uh, bolted this down to a slot on the mill and, and you know, done the turning on the radius there and milled it off and got it more accurate, but uh, it's 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 working. It's working fine. Uh, I got the pin dropped down. Um, you can see that's pretty well fitting up there good. Uh, I went undercut on this width here by about two thousandths. Uh, this is 624 and this is 622. So wish I hadn't done that, but it is what it is. Um, I've allowed uh, for the half inch extra here um, and a little bit more so we can face off the end. And I uh, went ahead and uh, knocked off these uh, hard corners so that we're not doing such a hard interrupted cut on the lathe. And I went ahead and indicated this in in the fore jaw and um, had it in there pretty good. Um, so now that I've got all that done, I'm going to uh, give these, uh, tighten these back up and see where we are. Five eighty one, we're going to take forty thousandths off of there. So we're on 501. We'll keep doing a little filing and uh, <clears throat> get it right down to, 
to 500 and uh, then we'll run the dye on it. I moved over to the vise. I was having a hard time getting it started in the lathe. And that spindle won't, I don't know how to lock it. So I couldn't keep it from moving anyway. And I don't think I got these threads on here going on straight. All right, here's the part all finished up. Um, you can see it's a pretty close match. I think I got this right here a little thicker than this, and I think it's a touch on the long side. So we may go and uh, face that off right there and then mill a little bit more on that. But I think it would fit like it is. I'm really disappointed in those threads. Uh, they're not very straight, and I might have to remake this part, but and if I do, I'll just make it off camera. Um, it really didn't take me that long to make it. Just a lot of rambling in the video. So speaking of that, let me go ahead and cut this off. And this will be the end of part two, and we'll see you back tomorrow for part three.